Today, let's talk about Matthew 24, which is mainly about prophecies. I'll first read the scriptures, learn it briefly, and then explain the key points. Chapter 24, verse 1 Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to its buildings. Chapter 24, verse 2 Do you see all these things? he asked. I tell you the truth, not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. In 20 BC, King Herod spent 46 years helping the Jews to rebuild the temple. That is, from 20 BC, the temple was magnificent and considered the most sacred place for Jewish people. When Jesus said, the temple will be thrown down, no one believed it. However, Forty years later, around 70 AD, Roman soldiers sacked Jerusalem and destroyed the temple completely. Chapter 24, verse 3 As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the place where the prophet Zechariah prophesied that the Messiah would come and establish his kingdom. It was the most suitable place for the disciples to ask questions. The disciples asked Jesus when he would return with authority and what would happen. At that time, Jesus told his disciples that he would be crucified and would come again in the future. So the disciples asked him when he would come again with power and what signs would accompany his return. This chapter mainly talks about this. Chapter 24 verse 4 Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives you. Chapter 24, verse 5. For many will come in my name, claiming, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. They are the false Christs. Chapter 24, verse 6. You will hear of wars and rumours of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. The end is still to come. However, you will hear the rumours. There will be false Christs and then rumours of wars. Chapter 24, verse 7. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. Chapter 24, verse 8. All these are the beginning of birth pains. It means the beginning of the Great Tribulation. Chapter 24, verse 9. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. You will be hated, rejected, and not recognised by the mainstream society, so you will certainly be persecuted. You should be prepared. Chapter 24, verse 10 At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. This refers to some of these disciples who will turn away from faith, lose faith, or even betray each other. Those without a firm faith 
or turn away. Chapter 24, verse 11 And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Chapter 24, verse 12 Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. Chapter 24, verse 13 But he who stands firm to the end will be saved. Chapter 24, verse 14 And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. The end will come. This is the time. Before the end times, when the gospel preached by the returning Christ is spread throughout the world, all nations will witness. This means that when Christ returns, he will also preach gospel, and it will be spread all over the world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. As we know, now transportation is convenient and the internet has developed, so it's fast to spread the gospel. At that time, it took over 1,000 years to spread the gospel of Jesus throughout the world. But when Christ comes again, it won't take such a long time to spread the gospel throughout the world. It will be relatively easy. Therefore, the end times are approaching because the gospel preached by the returning Christ is about to be spread all over the world. Chapter 24, verse 15. So when you see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes desolation, spoken of through the prophet Daniel, the abomination that causes desolation refers to the false Christs who use religious authority to meet their own desires in the name of Jesus, as well as the antichrists who oppose religious faith. They are standing in the holy place, occupying the holy place. The holy place not only refers to Jerusalem, but also includes all the churches and places where the gospel can be preached. Chapter 24, verse 16. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Chapter 24, verse 17. Let no one on the roof of his house go down to take anything out of the house. Chapter 24, verse 18. Let no one in the field go back to get his cloak. Chapter 24, verse 19. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. It means that the disaster arrives quickly where pregnant women and nursing mothers run slowly and can't escape in time. So, how dreadful. This means that the disaster comes very quickly, without warning. Chapter 24, verse 20. Pray that your flight will not take place in winter or on the Sabbath. In winter, if you can't run, you may freeze to death. Chapter 24, verse 21 For then there will be great distress, unequalled from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equalled again. This means that in the history of mankind, there has never been such a great tribulation, and there won't be one in the future. Chapter 24, verse 22. If those days of tribulation had not been cut short, no one would survive. If the tribulation lasts too long, no one would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. The days of tribulation will be shortened.
chapter 24, verse 23. At that time, if anyone says to you, Look, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe it. Christ is in the hearts of believers. If you follow Jesus' words, he is right in your heart. This is not an imagination, but a reality, as God is everywhere. As long as you follow Christ's teachings, he is right in your heart. Chapter 24, verse 24. For false Christs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and miracles to deceive even the elect, if that were possible. The devil will pretend to be Christ and prophet and perform many miracles. However, their actions will be exposed and therefore won't work. Whatever they show is deceptive. Their actions will be exposed and therefore won't work. The elect won't be deceived. Chapter 24 verse 25 See, I have told you ahead of time. Chapter 24, verse 26. So if anyone tells you, there he is, out in the desert, do not go out. Or, here he is, in the inner rooms, do not believe it. Chapter 24, verse 27. For as lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. This is a comparison between true and false. If you seek from the outside, you will only find false Christs. The lightning represents wisdom and light, shining from the east to the west, illuminating the whole world. In other words, when the true Christ returns, his wisdom and light will shine throughout the world and he will gain recognition from the whole world. Don't be anxious, and don't try to find the returning Christ from external appearances. The Lord has said, My sheep hear my voice. Christ is in our hearts. If we follow his commandments and teachings, live the life that God requires of us, we will be saved. When Christ comes again, we will naturally recognize him. Chapter 24, verse 28. Wherever there is a carcass, there the vultures will gather. During the tribulation, there will be many corpses. Chapter 24, verse 29. Immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. This means that the tribulation is so huge that the sky and earth will be darkened. Chapter 24 verse 30 At that time the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky and all the nations of the earth will mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. When the true Christ, the Son of Man, comes back, there will be signs in heaven. As the book of Revelation mentioned, the Son of Man will only come after the sounding of the seventh trumpet, which will bring one disaster after another, each worse than the one before. Now it's February 2020. The disaster has started to appear since December 2019. Of course, the disasters have been very serious and continuous in the past century, starting from the Industrial Revolution through World War I and World War II, and all the wars and disasters that have occurred in the world. But this is only a sign. 
Since December 2019, mankind has entered a new era and the real disaster is about to come. The preceding century has only been a preparation and accumulation. And now the real disaster is about to begin. In the book of Revelation, after the fourth trumpet sounded, someone said, Whoa, whoa, whoa! which means that the disaster was very apparent. In recent years, there have been many prophecies about disasters, and this saying, Whoa, 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 is actually a prophecy about disasters. When I travelled around China more than 20 years ago, I saw signs of disaster, and at that time I thought to myself, if this continues, within 50 years, humans will go extinct. That was my feeling at that time. Now, in February 2020, it's already very clear. As we all know, in the locust plague in East Africa this year, there have been over 600 billion locusts, moving at a speed of 150 kilometres per day, and devouring everything in their path. They've already ravaged much of Africa. Now they have reached Pakistan and are still spreading into India, and their rate of reproduction is still increasing. With tens of millions of people in Africa, in the next few years there will gradually be famines. Now it's not just China that has an epidemic, the virus is spreading in other places too. Moreover, the wildfires in Australia are still burning, with billions of animals killed, and many more left without habitats. All of these are just signs, and it's only the beginning. Chapter 24, verse 31 and he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. At that time, when the Son of Man is about to come, the angels will use a trumpet to call together all the elect from around the world. At that time, everyone must unite together. Only through unity, can we be saved and have strength? Chapter 24, verse 32 Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Chapter 24, verse 33 Even so, when you see all these things, you know that it is near, right at the door. That is, seeing all these signs is like the budding of a tree, indicating that the Son of Man is near. Chapter 24, verse 34 I tell you the truth, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. The Son of Man will establish a new heaven and a new earth in the world. Chapter 24, verse 35 Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Chapter 24, verse 36 No one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Jesus emphasized the things that will happen at the end of times, pointing out that the elect don't need to be anxious about the specific date, but should focus more on how to prepare and consistently live in God's will. In this way, no matter when Christ comes again, he will call them his people. That is to say, we should not be concerned about the specific date of the end times, but instead focus on obeying the commandments, living the life that God requires of us, and repenting of our sins. 
These are the things we should value. We should focus on doing these things well, and at that time we will be saved. Chapter 24, verse 37 As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. When the Son of Man comes, it will be like the days of Noah. Chapter 24, verse 38 For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. Up to the day Noah entered the ark. Chapter 24, verse 39 and they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. This is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. This means that when the Son of Man comes, there will be a great tribulation. Chapter 24, verse 40 Two men will be in the field. One will be taken, and the other left. Chapter 24, verse 41 Two women will be grinding with a hand mill. One will be taken and the other left. Chapter 24, verse 42 Therefore keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. That is, at that time there will be a significant population reduction. Chapter 24, verse 43 but understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. If he knew when the thief was coming, he would prepare for it. Chapter 24, verse 44 So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. When will the Son of Man come? No one can predict it. And most people will not be aware of his arrival until it happens. Chapter 24, verse 45 Who then is the faithful and wise servant, whom the Master has put in charge of the servants in his household to give them their food at the proper time? Chapter 24, verse 46 it will be good for that servant whose master finds him doing so when he returns. This is God's true followers, those who obey God's will in their actions and work to save others. When the master comes, this servant will be blessed. Chapter 24 verse 47 I tell you the truth, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. When the Master comes, these people will be given authority to manage everything. Chapter 24, verse 48 But suppose that servant is wicked and says to himself, My Master is staying away a long time. Chapter 24, verse 49 And he then begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with drunkards. Chapter 24 Verse 50 The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour he is not aware of. Chapter 24, verse 51 He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This person claims to believe in God, but doesn't prepare and obey the commandments. Rather, he indulges in eating, drinking, and pleasure, leading to decadence. When the Son of Man really comes, he will still want to take control of everything. However, at that time, he will only weep and gnash his teeth. That's all for Matthew 24, and let's go back and explain the key points. Previously, when the disciples asked about the signs of Christ's return and the end times, Jesus' first warning was, Watch out that no one deceives you. Many people believe in rumours, because at that time there will be false Christs and false prophets 
who do great wonders in Christ's name. Deceive people with miracles and gain fame and wealth through hypocrisy. The purpose of their deception is mainly to gain fame and wealth, rather than truly serving others and doing good deeds. As long as we seek these signs from the outside, we are easily deceived and misled. The only way to avoid being deceived is to focus on Jesus' teachings, to focus on actual practice, and to focus on ourselves rather than on these illusions on the outside. We must be cautious of those who use their supposed supernatural powers and good works, only superficially good, to deceive others. Some false Christs and false prophets who deceive people also do good works. They love to heal people and say what people want to hear. The prophet Daniel said, The abomination that causes desolation will stand in the holy place, which includes false Christs and false prophets. When the false prophets come, they claim to have received messages from God, but only preach about health and wealth. Even when the world is turning away from the right path, they only say what people want to hear. They are popular leaders who say what people love to hear. God wants you to be rich. God wants you to do what you want to do. Or kill the devil's people. And use these as excuses to launch war. Western politicians, in order to win elections, say whatever the voters want to hear and flatter them. They can say any false or deceiving words, promise to make people rich and live a happy life, without asking them to obey God's commandments and live the life that God requires. Nowadays, entertainment and tourism industries are booming around the world, and people are becoming decadent. Very few people go to church to pray or repent, to observe the Sabbath. In the West, including Taiwan, anyone can publish a book, and anyone can preach any kind of false teachings without anyone caring, while those who truly spread the gospel are very few. False teachings and immoral indulgences seem like a destructive virus that erodes people's faith in God and genuine love for others. Sin causes people to focus on themselves and causes their love to grow cold. Many people cling to comfort and pleasure and slowly forget Jesus' teachings. The Ten Commandments given by Moses in the Old Testament are fundamental, but people nowadays find it difficult to keep them. Now there are three billion Christians in the world, as well as many Jews and Hindus. No religion allows its followers to kill, steal, commit adultery, or bear false witness. None of the religions permit their followers to do these things. However, nowadays, believers can't help but break them. And most people can't even follow the most basic commandments. Moreover, what Jesus said in the New Testament is even harder for people to do. Nowadays, with the highly developed science and technology, in both the East and the West, people's sins are getting deeper and more rampant, everywhere filled with deception, and human suffering and disasters are increasing. Several decades ago, one Gandhi could change the history of India, but now, even if 10,000 Gandhis emerge, they can't change anything because no one believes in them. 
Jesus prophesied that his followers would be persecuted by those who hated them. But even in the midst of terrible persecution, they still have hope, knowing that salvation belongs to them. Trials, tests, can filter those who are false or only seeking comfort, revealing who the true Christians are. When you are forced to abandon or violate Christ, you must not compromise but hold firm to your faith in order to be saved. The prophet Daniel said, the abomination that causes desolation will be standing in the holy place, which also includes the Antichrist. When the end times come, the Antichrist will set up a statue for himself and order everyone to worship it. Why is he called the Antichrist? Because they are against all religions, against faith, and they say there is no God, no Saviour. Since the Industrial Revolution in the 1840s, there have been more and more Antichrists, with Marx as their representative figure. They systematically destroy faith and oppose God. They establish their own statues and tell people to worship them. For example, the Statue of Liberty was made by the Antichrist. It represents the pursuit of freedom, the enjoyment of the five desires, and the belief that everyone has the right to do whatever they want without obeying God's will and teachings. Modern people use freedom as an excuse to do abominable things, causing their faith to wither and their love to grow cold over time. Okay, that's all for this lecture.